Hey guys, it's Amy with 804 Sycamore, and right now I'm standing in our kitchen nook. Behind me is the open floating shelves, and then we have a countertop and doors and drawers, um, cabinetry down here, and it's a great spot for my husband's espresso machine and everything, but the clearance of these shelves is quite tall. So we have 18 inches and then 21 and a half. So I've basically only been able to use these shelves for decorative purposes and, um, and I, like large pieces of decor. So I kind of wanted to add some function and give us a spot to put more dishes um, and things like that. So I'm gonna build a built-in and I'm really excited because I'm still going to have some decorative shelving right in the center. So I'm not gonna totally lose that, but we're gonna make it more manageable and um, reasonable. So, um, Please like this video and subscribe if you haven't, and let's get going. So the first step is to demo the top shelf. I was going to um, go ahead and leave the bottom shelf for stability, and it's the correct height. And so I'm just breaking the caulking seams with a razor blade, um, and then there, the, the front face board here is glued on really well, and it's solid wood, and so I'm just taking a, a spackle knife and hammer it, trying to hammer it in there, trying to break it free. Um, I don't want to damage any of my sheetrock, so I'm being really careful. So um, there was a lot of that going on. Once I made a little bit of progress, then I'm using a crowbar to really try to um, get in there, break that glue seal, and pull it away. Once I can get the front face off, it will be so much easier to get the top and bottom shelves off, and then the side um, braces were a cinch. So I just kept working at it. It's better to take your time and do a good job so you don't damage anything else. So um, go ahead and demo your space carefully and make sure that you are using eye protection, uh, maybe gloves, anything to keep you safe. It was very satisfying to finally get this top shelf. Um, I had to really hammer it up it's it's pretty stuck in there um, but once I got it to give it did um, scrape our walls a little bit but I knew the new cabinetry would be covering it so wasn't too worried about that and here's my shelf help um, cabinets you can see the the three columns and what I'm what I like to do is I like to set it up exactly how the diagram shows we're looking at the bottom of the shelf. Um, the top board goes all the way across and that is just for maximum stability. It's just um, really physics the way things um, are more the most stable. And then I'm going around and I'm marking where all of my pocket holes are going to go. It just makes it so much easier so I can just do them all in a row and I know that these will be on the outside, so I won't have to plug them, but the inside boards, I will have to do some covering. So the shelf help now wood, it already comes pre-sanded. Um, so what I did is I added a preconditioner because all the shelving in this cabinet is going to be a beautiful farmhouse stain by Rove & Dwell, um, the farmhouse color. So I like to just run um, a light sanding with the grain and just after conditioning and then I wipe them perfectly clean you don't want any dust or debris and then I like to use a staining sponge to wipe a nice even layer across all the shelves um, the front little strip even though on two of them they will be covered with a front face board um, just make sure all your edges are done and once I have an even coat then I like to take a more dry piece of the staining sponge and kind of soak it up and really get an even layer over the entire thing. You can also see where maybe it's missing a little bit and so I can press harder and get some more stain in those spots. Now this is the whitewash um, part because I like to lighten up that nice warm wood a little bit, kind of give it a French country wash. Um, I this is the first time I use this white wood stain. It's a little bit different than what I've used before. It's a little more um, translucent, but I really like it. And so what I did is I brushed on an even layer and then the instructions say to wait two to three minutes before wiping it off. And so 
I did four boards at a time. And remember, you have to do the, the top and the underside and uh, the edges as well. So it was quite a process. Make sure you're in a well-ventilated area. And I like to wear gloves. I don't like the stain to be touching my skin. Um, I didn't feel like I needed a mask because it's pretty low um, fumes. But once you have an even layer, take care of all your drips. And then you're going to go ahead and wipe it evenly with a nice lint-free clean cloth. So here I am um, just doing a, a easy wipe. I'm not really removing any of the whitewash. I'm just kind of wiping it, smoothing it. I'm making sure there's no really heavy areas. So this is um, a Craig pocket hole jig. It is awesome. It is so ergonomic. I absolutely love it. I have had some shoulder issues from doing excessive drilling and this couldn't be easier. Um, and I'm drilling the, the size of pocket holes for a three quarter inch thick wood. It's all in the instructions um, for what setting to have it at. It's just, it's too easy. Um, you just slide it up against the stop and then when you pull down, my all of my drill shavings, they get sucked into um, my shop vac. So it keeps everything clean. Um, and you just have to make sure that your stop is um, in there secure because after several times it can loosen. So be aware of that. And once all your pocket holes are done, um, it's time to assemble. So I like to add a um, smooth line of wood glue and then I love these um, Craig clamps. It just helps to make sure that my edges are perfectly square 90 degrees. Um, otherwise I don't think I would do a very good job screwing it in. Um, and if you have any glue that squishes out or drips out now is a good time to kind of clean that up with the clamps in and then I just use one and a quarter inch Craig screws for the three quarter inch thick wood and that's it it's that simple um, constructing the cabinet was probably the easiest part um, really because the shelf help now system makes it so easy that there's no question and um, the, the Craig pocket hole system makes all your joints secure. So as you can see, I have the top to do. So right now the cabinet is upside down. Um, the bottom of the cabinet is at the top and I wanted to do that first because I thought it would be so much easier um, and I'm not sure it really made a difference. So you want to add that thin line of glue and I wasn't able to do the clamps, um, but I felt like with the top secure, I could easily just kind of um, make sure that it was squared up and screw it in. I had gravity on my side, so that's what I did. So now it's time to add my vertical boards, and you want to make sure that all of your finished edges are facing the same way. So right now we are looking at the back of the cabinet. I don't know if you can see the rough um, plywood, but just make sure you keep that in mind when you're assembling. And again, I'm using the shelf help shelves to make sure that it's um, 90 degrees, make sure they're perfectly spaced so that when the time comes, all these shelves will fit when it's installed. And um, I just used an old rug to kind of help push it down because I didn't want the the tops to be wiggling around. So um, I love this, the Shelf Help Now system. It just makes assembly so easy, um, especially when you have multiple portions like this. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and flip it over and do the same thing. Again, if any glue squishes out, go ahead and wipe it now because it's much easier to clean now when you're ready to paint or stain later. So, um, Anyways, go ahead. now you can see the front of the cabinet, and this is actually the right orientation. You can see how the top goes all the way across, and the bottom board does not. It has the outside boards hitting the ground, so that's a stability thing. Um, 
and that's all in the diagram that shelf help now sends so that there's no questions about it um, again I use the shelves just to make sure everything lines up and that my shelves will fit when it's actually time to put them in so I use my pocket hole screws and it's a cinch just wipe off any extra glue and that's it now you can paint it before installation but I decided to install it first and I'm glad I did okay so for my outside cabinets I'm going to have adjustable shelves and I'm using this Craig jig it's for um, pin holes and I like to put a spacer board along the bottom of each one because I'm never going to put a shelf that low and so there's no reason to start at the very bottom and so I like to use my clamp and then I just use the drill bit that comes with the jig and I'm I'm doing every other hole because again I don't need that many options and then as you can see I'm just going to take the pin out put it in my in the you can see I put little pieces of tape to remind me of where which holes I'm drilling and so that just goes at the top I make sure it's flush and then I clamp it and then I drill wherever there's green tape and I did this uh, two four I did it six times for all the shelves so when all your pinholes are done you can do a light sanding make sure any little bits are gone and then go ahead and place your cabinet in the space now it's time to attach it to the wall studs and so I'm just using a stud finder and my cabinet is not pushed all the way back and it's also not all the way flush because I'm going to be adding some cabinet doors and face fronts and so I um, positioned my cabinet where I needed it and you're gonna when you add the shims you're gonna want to make sure that you can't see them uh, and my cabinets kind of high so I really had to push those shims up there um, but that just makes sure that it is flush against the wall um, evenly on both sides so I'd like to get my shims from the hardware store there's just various sizes whatever you need and then I just use three inch wood screws to attach it to the um, wall studs okay so once your cabinets installed you can uh, move on to other parts of the project and for me it was um, adding some fixed brackets for my fixed shelves in the center column and I just use these square dowels and I decided ahead of time the placement I wanted them so measure mark measure twice mark uh, use a level and then I just use my brad nail gun um, to um, nail my wood into wood and I didn't use glue um, that's an option you can use some wood glue if you want um, you could also use wood screws but I know how much weight I'm putting on these shelves and I figured with three brackets evenly distributed um, that brad nails would be fine and so I did this for a top shelf and then a bottom shelf um, and those are kind of my specialty shelves this center column is what I'm going to be using for some decorative elements and so um, I'm not really stacking a bunch of dishes or heavy items on it it's more decorative so um, and these dowels will be painted green the whole cabinet will be painted green like I painted the back of the wall um, but my shelving is all stained the nice farmhouse wood color so have I have a little bit of variation and contrast with that if you are adding support brackets for little shelves I highly recommend doing the left and right brackets first um, it just makes that that wall bracket super easy to do and then you want to use your stud finders so that you can make sure to get your brad nails into the studs just for extra strength and security okay so now I'm going to attach the face fronts I just took my one by two mark the spot cut it and then I brought it back and I um, used my brad nail gun and I nailed it in several spots really get it in there securely um, I, I think I'm using one and a half inch brad nails um, and so I did the left side the right side 
and then I did the top and then those two inner spots. And so um, there is a method to my madness on the Shelf Help website. They give um, guidance on the order to do the front face boards. And so I just follow that and I love the way it looks and I feel like it's the proper finish technique. So um, use lots of nails and get your face fronts in there securely. Um, and then we're going to continue on with um, those inside face front boards. And for these inner face fronts, I used um, a carpenter square because I didn't want them overlapping this middle column at all. Um, I need to put my set shelves in there and they will have face fronts as well. So I needed complete clearance for those. And after you're done with all your brad nailing and, and screwing and seams, um, I like to take some wood filler. I like using the, the pink stuff that turns brown when it's dry that way. There's no question about when it's time for me to sand and I don't have to worry about it. I just look at the color. Now that the face fronts are on the cabinet, I could measure and, and make sure that my shelves would fit and I could put the face fronts on there. So I decided to go ahead and drill some pocket holes and really have very secure face front boards on my fixed shelves. Now what this also meant is that those pocket holes could be seen from the underside and so what I did is I just used the Craig plugs and I um, wood glued them in, shaved them off with a multi-tool and then added some stain and they blend in quite well. So um, again I didn't use glue, I just went ahead and screwed them directly in but this face front board it really adds a beautiful nice finish to the entire cabinetry. Um, I could have left them off, but then I feel like the fixed shelves would have blended in with the adjustable shelves. Um, and I really wanted these fixed cabinets to be a little more special. I wanted them to have that decorative element. And so um, you'll see what else I added to add um, an extra detail, just some beauty to it. Now that I have my fixed shelves assembled and ready to go, um, I decided to go ahead and cut my um, brass railing and I'm really excited about this. This was something new for me, um, but I love the look of it and it turned out to be a super easy thing to add. So I just took two boards um, to kind of protect the brass and to protect my countertop and then I used all my clamps to hold it in place. I really didn't know how difficult it would be to saw this brass. It's solid brass, but brass is a relatively um, softer metal. And so I just used um, a saw for, for metal and it um, I thought it would take longer. And as this video is fast forwarded, it still was rather quick. And so to saw three gallery rails was actually pretty quick. And then I just lightly sanded the edge um, just to make sure there were no sharp edges. And then it was time to assemble. And so I put the rail in, in each end and then I decided where I wanted it, marked the spots. And then I did the exact same measurements for each shelf. And then once you have your spots, you can go ahead and drill those pilot holes. And then um, because the screws are so tiny I went ahead and just tr um, screwed them in by hand. And so, um, as you can see, this detail was so easy to add and it's purely decorative, but it's a beautiful addition. I ordered these cabinet doors online. Um, I was able to specify soft close and that I wanted a glass insert and the exact size. Um, it was a really great company to work with. And so now I am just adding um, a bead of silicone to attach the glass. And then once the glass is in there, I waited 24 hours and I added another bead on top. So um, this glass is secured by silicone caulking um, it's the adhesive that's uh, very 
common to do this, but there are other methods also. You can use plastic or wood um, inserts in the groove as another way to secure your glass. So um, I ordered the glass actually through Amazon and the link is not available right now, but um, I would use them again if, if the link became available. After waiting an additional 24 hours for the silicone to cure, it was time to install these. So go ahead and recruit a helping hand. The doors are quite heavy with the glass and I did not mark my hinge holes ahead of time. So my lovely daughter is holding the weight of the door. I'm measuring, I'm um, marking. It's also kind of difficult to see the, the dark green paint. Um, it's dark in the cabinet, but mark your holes. And then this is where you're going to drill pilot holes. And then the door comes with the screws that work with the hinges. So um, it's just a perfect fit once you get the spots marked. When you're drilling your pilot holes, make sure that you are using a bit that is smaller than the screws. You definitely don't want these screws pulling out. Um, and so be conservative with the size and you don't have to go too deep. You're just really getting a start so that there's no cracking and splitting in the wood. And then go ahead and recruit help again to hold this heavy door in place while you add the screws. And after you get a few screws in to hold the weight, it's much easier just to continue and get the rest in there and make sure that, that the hinge has these little um, wraps that you can see where they kind of hug, grab the wood. Make sure those are all lined up so that your door isn't crooked. Um, again, get a helper and it makes it much easier. One thing that we hate in our house is when a cabinet door slams shut. And so um, we're just adding these little silicone dots to the corners just to make sure that um, when they do shut, if they are shut with a little extra force, that they will have that, that soft bump. So um, just a little added detail you can do. And then um, the most satisfying part was being able to set up all of our coffee equipment back in the space. It had been on the counter for so long. And so um, it's, it was just wonderful to be able to move stuff around and free up some of the, the cabinet space below using the new upper cabinets. And then I decided to go ahead and make it a coffee and tea station. So I pulled all my teas out and moved them over here so that everything would be easy and convenient with our hot water, um, and our tea cups and our coffee cups. And so, um, I was pretty excited about just making a really nice use out of the space. <laughs> 